In concept, it is one of the coolest characters in the game, swinging around a huge sword and being able to transform into a dragon-human hybrid all in one gameplay package, and is even able to power up beyond that with a third form called God Might, giving him a lot of variety in combat. He is the only character who can use 8 skills in total and has both melee and ranged options and can have windows of high burst damage thanks to his skills he has, along with a couple utility options too. All of this does sound really nice on paper, and while he is an extremely fun character, he can also feel very punishing since accessing his higher damage options relies on both execution and not dying, which can make him feel underwhelming if you aren't able to take advantage of his kit. In this video, I want to discuss id, talk about his strengths and weaknesses, discuss general setup and playstyle, and showcase some practical gameplay applications of the character. If you enjoy guide content on Relink as well as other RPGs and would like to see more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because I do want to cover every character, and I would also love you forever. Let's get into it. So Id is a character who may seem complex at first glance, having to manage his three separate forms, but he's actually a more straightforward character than you would expect. In base form, he has a standard attack combo that leads to his Y attack, Sword Flurry, which starts his combo finisher, and can use a lunge attack from this button as well into a finisher. Looking at his two support skills, we see that Id has a gauge that fills up as you use skills in combo finisher attacks, and usually a full combo finisher can fill half your gauge while a lunge combo can fill just an extra little bit if you're really close to filling the gauge. It's also worth noting that it can do the same thing Percy can, where you can cancel a skill with a dodge early to keep the skill cooldown and immediately go into a sword flurry, but this isn't that useful on him by comparison because of how his skill cooldowns work and how often you're probably form shifting anyway, but it is an option to consider in some situations. When this gauge is filled, you will transform into dragon form. In dragon form, you have a new set of skills that are immediately off cooldown no matter what, and different attacks including a ranged combo option from your combo finisher button that does less damage than your melee combo, but is still really nice to have. The melee combo is bound to the normal attack button. Dragon form also has stout heart, meaning enemies cannot interrupt you with regular attacks unless they kill you, which can still happen, so do keep an eye on your health if you do plan to try to face tank through something. But the extra utility of having stout heart is still really nice. When you fill the four outer segments while in dragon form, in which one segment is filled by either your melee or ranged combo, or by using Link Attack, you will enter God Might. God Might has increased damage compared to your base form, along with a new high burst damage combo finisher, but is otherwise identical ability-wise. Your primary goal in the base form is to build up to your dragon form, and your primary goal in your dragon form, most of the time, is building up to God Might. And your primary goal in God Might is to unleash your God Might finisher, which does a massive amount of burst damage, but ends God Might afterwards. This sends you back to your base form, where you would repeat the cycle. Now, you might be thinking, is it not better to stay in Dragon Form or God Might longer in order to get better damage? Well, as it turns out, Dragon Form doesn't actually offer a ton of additional damage, and God Might's damage while being higher than base form isn't actually that much higher that it's worth staying in the form over just using your finisher when you have a good moment to unleash it, considering the large amount of damage you can get from the finisher, especially because it doesn't take too terribly long to form shift usually. This means an ideal gameplay loop for max damage with id is going to be shifting forms constantly to get off as many god might finishers as you can. However, do be warned that dying while in god might immediately ends it and sends you back to base form where you have to restart, and dying in dragon form does the exact same thing. This means you can easily get punished very hard for dying, being unable to get your high damage finisher off, and being forced into a lower DPS form to start over, which makes him one of the more punishing characters in the game to die as. There are a few situations you may want to prolong staying in one form for a bit longer, such as needing the ranged options from Dragon Mode, or if the boss is about to use a special move and has damage reduction while in God Might, so you may want to hold your finisher. But generally, you'll want to do the cycle as much as you can. Because the God Might finisher is so important, though, I do want to mention this. I'll save talking about most of his skills in the skill section, but the skill Ragnarok form, which is its skill that immediately fills the gauge, is very good for getting two God Might finishers in a row. The game will tell you this is to go into Dragon Form instantly, but if you use it right after a God Might finisher, it will refresh the gauge so you can use another finisher, and this is typically the stronger use of it. You may also want to hold on to skill cooldowns for when you get out of God Might since it makes it easier to get back into Dragon Form, so you can combo your skills into Sword Flurry faster for easier meter gain. You can also combo into Sword Flurry from a Link Attack in either form. All in all, he has a pretty fun gameplay loop, but if you cannot execute, you will likely find his damage to be a bit lacking, and even if you do everything right, his DPS may still not be quite as high as some of the other heaviest hitters in the game. But hey, he does have some utility in the form of a slow, and even the ability to double slow if needed sometimes to give more time to wail on a boss and to use your God Might finisher safely, but we'll talk about that more in skills. That should cover mostly general info regarding it and playstyle, I'll talk about more in the gameplay section, so let's get into setup and his skills. 
So the setup for the 60 second dummy you saw at the beginning of the video is pretty close to what you see here. Just instead of linked together, I had another supplementary damage five and I had some better substats in order to have maximum cooldown reduction from quick cooldown and cascade in order to use more arts. I did not run glass cannon. I could not really fit that in and also have a 100% critical hit rate. You can hit over 27 million with glass cannon, maybe even over 28 million. And I also had life on the line as one of my imbued sub traits just to make sure I was always hitting damage caps instead of what you see here, which is more defensive in nature. So let's talk about the actual setup I have here, which I recommend for more general use just because it has a bunch of useful utility options. One, I am running the Terminus weapon. You already know the deal with this. The Terminus weapon is just an extremely good rep weapon in general because it has the Catastrophe sub-trait, which, of course, gives you an additional 100% damage cap and 50% attack when you're below 45,000 health. So if you're able to reach that threshold, you get a ton of benefit out of this ability. So definitely make sure you're running the Terminus weapon if you have it. If you don't have it, your Awakened weapon or the Crit Rate weapon will work just fine as usual. As far as its unique sigils, we have Versalus Ignition and Versalus Foundations. These are both two very good sigils you should absolutely be running in every situation because they have really useful bonus effects on them. Versalus Foundation will boost the Versalus Gauge gain by 25%. This means you can transform into Dragon Form sooner, meaning you can get into God Might sooner, which means you can use your God Might Finisher sooner, and you can repeat the combo even faster afterwards because you have 25% extra Gauge gain when you get back to your base form. Very good sigil, definitely run it. And Versalus Ignition grants Drain, Stout Heart when you're in God Might, and also boosts your damage cap. This is a very useful effect to have, makes your God Might even more powerful, means you can't be interrupted while in God Might unless you die, means you can even recover some health you deal as damage when you're in God Might, and you do even more damage because of the damage cap raise. So, absolutely run this. These are both two very good effects to have. As far as the additional sub trait I have on both of these, I have Tyranny on Ignition and Stun Power on Foundation. So, Tyranny is obvious here. This is just boosts your damage by quite a bit by giving you a big attack boost. Stun Power is kind of a filler skill because I didn't really have a better option for this, but the Stun Power has been a little nicer than I expected, so it's just a nice kind of filler skill to have if you don't really have anything better because it gives you a much much more Stun Power, which means you can fill the blue gauge of enemies a little bit quicker, meaning you can get Link Attacks a little bit easier, which can be pretty nice for it since you can combo off Link Attacks into your God Might Finisher if you're able to execute that or get into God Might faster just from being able to gain more Versalus Gauge. So... Not a bad effect to have, not something I would recommend if you as vitally important, but something you can just put on there if you have nothing better to put on there. War Elemental is a really nice sigil to have. It gives all of your damage a 20% boost that bypasses the damage cap unless the enemy has no element that you can hit super effectively, but really, really good sigil to have. Absolutely recommend running this pretty much at all times if you have the ability to. And then I have my obligatory 4 damage cap 5 pluses. This allows me to hit much higher damage on everything. You should absolutely be running this. Make sure you're hitting that maximum damage cap, whatever you do. Should max out at level 65. So as long as you're hitting level 65, you'll get an additional 250% damage cap, meaning that you can hit 250% more damage, which is really, really important because otherwise the damage caps are way too low and you'll be hitting them too easily and not doing nearly enough damage. The substats on them... I have a Steel Nerves. This reduces the damage you take while in Stout Heart. As Id, you're in Stout Heart quite a bit between Dragon Form and God Might, so I definitely recommend having one level of this at least to reduce damage taken to yourself if you want to have more defensive utility. I also have Improved Dodge. This is even more defensive utility, meaning you can dodge attacks easier, and it also gives you up to seven dodges in a row without having to be stunned afterwards, which is really nice. I have a Potion Hoarder. This is one of the best utility sigils in the entire game. Gives you a lot of potions to allow you to heal yourself more. Gives you three revives. Run this if you have it. And then Cascade, this is some um, cooldown reduction to uh, make my skills come off cooldown a little bit faster. Now, I do not have maximum cooldown reduction like I do on some other characters because it's less efficient on it because of how his kit works, how you always have your skills up when you go into dragon form no matter what, and you're not going to be staying in dragon form enough for it to matter that they come off cooldown, and how cooldown reduction does not tick while you are in dragon form for your other skills. And even outside of that, you're using normal attacks a lot as it, you're using your combos a lot as it, so it doesn't matter as much to have the uh, cooldown reduction on him compared to other characters. So that is the main reason you're not going to see too many levels of that. I've only got one level of Cascade and one level of Quick Cooldown. The Quick Cooldown is on my Link Together. Link Together is a really good party utility skill, which uh, increases the Link Gauge gain, and, and it boosts your Link Attack, Skybound, Skybound Arts, and Chain Burst. So very, very nice sigil to have just as a general filler sigil to uh, boost everything. So I really like Link Together because of that. I'm running two Supplementary Damage 5 Pluses. This just increases your damage further. Every time you trigger Supplementary Damage, this gives you a 20% damage boost in the form of an extra damage roll. 
This is a 74% chance if you're running two of them, so that's really nice. Three-fourths of the time, you're going to be getting 20% more damage on all of your hits, which is pretty nice to have as just general filler slots here. If you want to run something more defensive or utility-based, you absolutely can. You don't really need another damage boost since you're probably going to be hitting caps fairly easily most of the time. Some attacks and god might, might not hit cap with my current setup, so you might want to run like a life on the line if you trust your survivability or something like that, or an extra stamina or a tyranny or something just to get that extra attack boost. And then I have critical hit rate 5 plus. I have two of these in order to hit the critical hit rate cap of 100% along with my overmasteries. Now, with just one of these, I hit 90% with my current overmasteries because I've got 10% from that. But I'm running two just because I like the consistency of having 100% critical hit rate. And it also just guarantees that I always have that maximum damage amount. So the substats on them are Aegis. This gives a health boost and also ensures I stay below uh, 45,000 health with Tyranny. So I get about 41,000 health here, which is really nice just for the extra stab ability, especially along with the uh, Steel Nerves, which ensures I'll probably be able to live attack at least one attack no matter what without even triggering the Guts. So that's really nice to have. And then on the other one, I have Stamina. This is just your best general attack booster. This boosts your health, your damage based on how high your health is. So as long as you're at full health, you get a 50% attack boost, which is really nice to have. And then finally, the other traits I have are the traits on my weapon, since I haven't mentioned them. I have Guts on my weapon. This just gives you a nice, uh, you can limit 1 HP no matter what, one time per fight. At the very least, it has a long cooldown at only level 4 compared to a level 15 version that you would find on a Sigil. But just being able to fit Guts in is really nice. I didn't really have a better way to fit it in than just having it as an imbued trait. The Glaciate Resistance is a bit of a filler slot here, and the critical hit rate up is uh, always nice to have to make sure I'm hitting that 100% rate. There are some other Sigil effects you could consider running, like Auto Revive, but in general you want to not die in the first place as it because that resets your gauges. So having stuff like Guts, uh, Stout Heart, Steel Nerve, stuff like that is going to limit the damage more than anything in Aegis too. So just preventing dying is going to be more important than dying and being revived immediately, so... Definitely recommend uh, running more defensive utility-based options on it in general, even over cooldown reduction in this specific case because of how his cooldowns work. So with that in mind, let's take a look at his skills now. It has uh, eight normal skills and then four skills in Dragon Form, which are locked to his Dragon Form no matter what, which the Dragon Form skills have the same name as his, some of his regular skills, but function a little bit differently most of the time. So first up, we have Regenleave Recidive, and I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. This is just a projectile attack, which can be pretty nice for hitting enemies from pretty far away, but the major benefit is the short cooldown it has. It having a short cooldown means you can use it to combo into your finisher, which means you get Versalist Gauge easier, and you can also get into your Godmite finisher a little bit faster from this as well. Although I recommend saving it for after your Godmite finisher is over, so you can get back into Dragon Form sooner afterwards from filling the Versalist Gauge, and get back into Godmite a little bit sooner as well. In Dragon Form, this skill is a little bit less useful. It's probably the least useful skill you have in Dragon Form. It's just a slow animation attack that fires three projectiles. It still can be okay to use in some situations, although I would not recommend using it over your other Dragon Form abilities. And if you can fill up the Dragon Gauge a little bit quicker without this to get into Godmite faster, then that is probably going to be the recommended solution. Ragnarok Form is a... Pretty much mandatory ability on him, it allows you to instantly transform into Dragon Form when you're in base form, and it also fully restores the Versalist Gauge if you activate it in God Might. So you can use your God Might finisher, and then activate this ability again in order to use another God Might finisher, which is the recommended use for it in my opinion, because that gives you a lot of burst damage at once, especially if you combo it with some of his other abilities. So this is absolutely mandatory, the best use of it is going to be using it in God Might form, unless you're near the end of a fight and just want to get into Dragon Form quickly to do a little bit more damage. But otherwise, save it for God Might form. Arcadia is another skill that I would say is almost essentially required just because the slow is a very nice utility to have. This will slow the action speed of the enemy, allowing you to get your combo finishers off easier, allowing you to use your Godmite finisher easier, and probably the best use of it is going to be using it right before a Godmite finisher if you don't have a free downtime moment to wail on the enemy, like such as breaking or anything like that. Just being able to stop the enemy for a little bit of time is really nice to have on a character like id. You can also combo this with the Dragon Form version of this, which also applies a slow in addition to a burn, which is a damage over time effect, which is really nice to have because since the way the cooldowns work, since you always have your cooldowns in Dragon Form off cooldown no matter what when you instantly transform, you're able to double slow the enemy, so you can slow and then slow again if you're very close to transforming into Dragon Form. This also can apply the other way. If you've got three uh, bars on your Dragon Form and you only need one more, you can slow, use a finisher really quickly in Dragon Form, get into your base form, use your slow one more time, and then go into your Godmite finisher. So you can just keep the enemy kind of locked in a slow for a while, which is really nice as a utility option to have. And the way I would recommend using it if you can. The double slow is super, super nice. Next up, we have Atonement. This is a very, very niche ability where if you want to play it more as a tank, you can take the damage of some of your allies while this is active, which is 
pretty nice as an effect, and it also releases an AoE at the end based on how much damage you have taken. I don't recommend running this normally because it is still a pretty risky effect to have, and it's also not really advisable if you want to get the uh, most out of the rest of his kit, I would say. It doesn't work in dragon form at all either, so you're just that's a time if you're trying to play it as a tank, you're not going to be able to take advantage of this skill. Scourge, this is just a wide AoE cleave with his sword. This is another damage option. You can consider this over Regan Leave Recidive if you want to, just because it's another kind of quicker cooldown damage option that he has. Instead of a projectile, this is just kind of a cleave in, cleave in front of him. And Dragon Form, this is one of your best abilities. You can multi-hit enemies with it, and it's just kind of a big, giant AoE laser in that form. So really, really good in Dragon Form. Really nice effect in that form. Otherwise, I don't really recommend running this over the projectile myself. I like the projectile utility more, but you could consider running this instead. Fourfold Vengeance is probably his least useful effect. This will gather Dragon Power for a devastating attack. This can be potentially your highest damage skill, but... The charge time on it, it makes it not worth using in most situations, and the fact that you can't really do anything, and the fact that you're constantly taking damage to yourself while you're using this, makes it not the most worth its skill, in my opinion. And then we have Never Enough. This will lunge at a foe and pummel them mercilessly in base form. This is an okay ability, but the problem is it's a longer cooldown, and even though it can do a little bit more damage than some of his other abilities, I don't really recommend it most of the time, and I think the longer uh, end lag animation can be a little annoying as well. And Dragon Form, this skill is a lot nicer because it's a nice gap closer that's just one quick attack and you can go into your melee combo immediately afterwards, which is really nice. So I do like the skill a lot more in Dragon Form. And then finally, we have Unbound. This is just a really nice general damage option. Does about medium damage compared to some of his other skills, but has a decent cooldown and is pretty easy to hit as one of his better damaging options. So most of the time I would be running this as well, but you could consider running some of the other options if you think the more niche utility they offer is going to be worth it in certain situations. So let's talk about Masteries very quickly. It's about what you would expect as usual. Normal attack damage cap up and skill damage cap up are going to be the most useful things that you have because that increases your damage even further. I also have critical hit rate up 10%. That allows me to hit 100% critical hit rate with the abilities that I currently have. If you're able to reach that 20%, you only have to run one critical hit rate sigil to hit 100%, which can be really nice. The Skybound Art damage cap up, or the Skybound Art damage up is a little bit of a filler effect in this situation, but it's still something that can be okay to have. Ideally, Skybound Art camp damage cap up would be a little bit better in this situation, and attack up in general could be nice to hit the damage caps in God Might that you can't quite always hit with the uh, more standard damage setup that I might be running sometimes. So that should cover it for Overmasteries. Let's go ahead and get into actual combat practicality now, since that was a lot. As per usual, spoilers on some of the final raid fights here if you are worried about that. So I think this fight does a pretty good job of showcasing a lot of its strengths. Starting things off, this dude immediately kind of dashes, so I'm able to kind of throw a projectile afterwards and immediately go into the uh, Sword Flurry uh, combo finisher to build off over half of my Versalist Gauge instantly. So that's a really good way to start, and we get into a Link Attack, so I'm able to basically get the last little bit here. Now, one thing you can do here is if you roll out of your final attack here, you will not immediately transform, which... In the case of this specific fight, there is a situation I'm going to want to have Dragon Form on just kind of starting off, so it's going to be this part right here. So I wait to transform just a little bit here, because I want to use my ranged attack to target these uh, orbs around the field. So by using your ranged combo finisher, you can basically destroy these orbs from anywhere on the field, which can be pretty nice. You can also kind of use this Dragon Form strategy in the Firefly stage of the fight, which is about halfway through. But being able to use it here is just fine. I'm also able to use the Link Attack to get immediately close again and uh, get my last uh, combo finisher in Dragon Form so I can transform into God Might right afterwards. Now, I know he's about to go to the center and uh, start taking damage reduction, so I do not use my God Might finisher yet or even try to slow yet because I know it's not going to work on him. So I just save those abilities because there's just no point in using them right then. Make sure to guard that attack because I ended up getting in the line of, line of fire there. Not really a huge deal. So this just kind of showcases some situations where you might want to hold on to some of your finishers. Now that he has uh, slowed down, I'm going to uh, wait for this AoE, and then I'm going to slow him. After this is usually when you have a moment to actually attack him. Now I can go into my God Might finisher. I use a Link Attack since it's available, and I just use my God Might finisher and just spam all these nice attacks. And uh, I break his tail. Once that's broken, I immediately use my uh, Ragnarok form to get my God Might finisher back, so I can just use it immediately again while he is uh, broken here and get a lot of additional damage out of that. So I've already gotten him almost to half health already, which is a really nice uh, start here. And now I'll use this Firefly. I don't have Dragon Form up for this, so I can't really target the uh, cubes across the field this time. That's not really a huge deal. I already got a lot of benefit out of uh, 
how I played the early part of the fight here, so not really a huge issue. Ideally, if you can, if you have the ability to get Dragon Form up before this phase, you would be able to do that and target the cubes from across the field. The targeting is still a little bit wonky in this game, but I'm just going to go and run around the arena and target it instead. I do have a couple ranged attacks and a couple options to hit it from across the field at least with uh, my projectile uh, skill. And the Zeta is following me as well, so I'm able to make short work of most of these at the very least. Get a fairly easy invincibility there, just rolling over the uh, side of the thing. It wore off before the next attack hit there. Not really a huge deal because it didn't do that much damage. So, one nice thing, if you're going to see me right here, is I'm just going to try to get my invincibility by uh, going into these AoEs intentionally and then dodging because they're fairly easy to farm invincibility off of. If, but this attack isn't dangerous enough because it's not the second version of this for that to really matter too much, but it's still nice practice to do sometimes. I also make sure to dodge over that, not really a huge deal. And now I can go back into attacking him again and uh, building up my dragon form gauge. Make sure to jump over that attack. And do end up getting hit there. Uh, I wasn't able to avoid the tail in time because I was in the middle of an attack animation. Not really a huge deal. I do end up getting a slow off here, so I'm able to uh, get the attacks a little bit easier. Although I was targeting an enemy across the field for some reason because the targeting system in this game is really whack, which ends up uh, kind of messing me up a little bit. But thanks to the additional survivability I have on the character, it's not really a big deal. I've got a lot of health. I've got uh, abilities to increase my defense. I've got guts, so I should be fine no matter what. And I transform into Dragon Form. This gives me Stout Heart, which means I have still nerves, act still nerves active now. So that's really nice. And now I'm just going to be using my uh, combo finishers to uh, get into God Might form when I can. Not really a huge deal if I can't immediately hear. He kind of nullifies some of my combo finishers by with the wind box, but not really a huge deal. And during this section, I'm going to use range attacks because I can't do melee attacks. If I stand in that little circle in the middle, it'll just instantly die. And uh, since I have Stout Heart, I'm able to kind of stay in place and use my uh, ranged combo finisher. I do have to heal some because I'm taking some damage thanks to the uh, attacks hitting me, but it is nice that I'm able to build that up anyway and not die. And now I get into God Might as soon as that finishes. So I make sure not to use my God Might finisher if it's not a moment I know I'm going to be able to hit it. I'm going to wait for this Link attack here because we've got Link Gauge 100%. Actually, I just use it immediately because I'm able to immediately chain this into a uh, Ragnarok form afterwards. That's right. And now that I am in Link Time, one thing about this character is when you're in Link Time, you have infinite God Might form. So I'm able to just spam God Might, and I'm going to immediately have it after this as well. That is one of the benefits of the character. So we're still in Link Time. I'm able to use another God Might finisher after this now, which is really nice as my allies are just kind of comboing him to death at this point. So just one more special move after this is all of that's uh, going to really take. I'm, where me and the Oigen are both going to use our specials here and just end the fight. So... Hopefully this fight showed off a lot of the uh, strengths of it as a character. I was able to show off the Stout Heart bonuses, uh, how to use God Might finishers effectively, uh, the slow, uh, and how to use that in the optimal situation, and just kind of how you would generally approach this playstyle in most fights here. I wasn't able to show off the double slow in this, but ideally you just slow and then go into your Dragon Form and slow again, or slow at the end of your Dragon Form and you only need one more combo finisher, and then the slow in God Might and use your God Might finisher. So a couple different ways you can approach that, but still... Pretty easy to execute, not too hard. All in all, it is a uh, really fun character who has a really nice gameplay loop as long as you can execute well. He may not feel like he does the most damage at times compared to some other characters, but I still do still really like him, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's some balance patches in the future to remedy some of that. Regardless, I think that is going to cover it for this video, so if you did learn something, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and make sure to leave a comment with any feedback on how I can improve these even further. And please look forward to all the remaining characters because I do want to cover all of them if these videos continue to do well. Sorry this one took a little bit longer. I was very low on materials when I had to make this one, so I had to do a lot of farming. But regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate all the support. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and hopefully I'll see you back here soon.